Hi, welcome to my classroom. We're here today to really talk about scientific investigations. We want to look at how you identify scientific processes. What about writing questions, hypothesis, predictions, conclusions? These are the things that are part of science. Being able to differentiate between variables, and being able to look at the repetition and the importance of these scientific investigation techniques. Now today I'm going to show you some different techniques in science. The first one I'm going to show you is a descriptive investigation and the second one is comparative investigations and then the third, the most important, is experimental investigations. So let's get started. So first of all, on our journey, we really want to talk about descriptive investigations. These are looking at objects or events or systems or animals and looking at them very carefully through data collection. For this kind of investigation, you need a lot of tools. You might need to get real close. Maybe you need a microscope or something that makes things look bigger. Maybe you want to go into a field and look at field investigations. You want to take a look and study an animal like Jane Goodall in Africa who studied chimpanzees. They're going to take a while to take a look at that. Maybe you need to measure and collect your data through numbers quantitatively you need to take numbers maybe you have use for a timepiece so you know how long things will happen um, cameras are really important too having a camera and being able to take pictures and collect your data with pictures most of all very importantly you're going to need your book to write down all of your data, to record things in a systematic way, to make sure that this investigation is documented. So asking the question, making the observations, and collecting your data to form that conclusion. Maybe you're looking at how many birds are in a certain area, or how many trees in a certain area of a jungle. These are all descriptive investigations. They take a lot of time. They take a lot of money because you may have to go out into the field and travel. So these kind of investigations are called descriptive investigations. Our second kind of investigations are comparative. These are really investigations where we compare how things are different or how they are alike. There's different kinds of questions that you could ask that make this kind of comparative investigation interesting. You're really looking at relationships and how they compare. Maybe how two rocks are alike or how one frog species is different from another frog species. So let's take a look at something that you could maybe use as a comparative investigation. So today We're taking a look at maybe something you've thought about before. We're going to take a look at how fast I can melt ice. So here we have two blocks of ice and these blocks of ice were exactly the same. I'm controlling them because my experiment is to see which one will melt faster. The first one I'll try is with sugar. 
So as I put the sugar on here, I want to take exactly the same amount of sugar and sprinkle that on just like that. This is the sugar. And I'm going to compare this in my investigation. I'm going to ask which one will melt faster or are they the same? Which one will melt faster, the salt or the sugar? So in this one, I take this and I sprinkle about the same, whoops, the same amount on this ice cube as my sugar cube. And then I take those and I wait. So we have the same amount of time for both of them. So let's take a look at what it looks like after one hour. We take our sugar and salt and let's see what happens. So let's say an hour went past and here is my salt and my sugar. And in this comparison, I can see that the salt has, has melted dramatically different and that it's actually gotten a lot faster and smaller than my sugar. So in this experiment, I'm going to be objective in my collecting and be honest that really there must be something about salt that melted the ice differently than the sugar. I compare the data, I write that data down, and then at the end when I make my conclusion, I can prove that the salt melted the ice faster than the sugar. In this comparative investigation, I've looked at things that are the same and things that are different. These are comparative investigations. So one of the things that I want to be really clear about here is that in science, creativity and logical thinking are super important. So in my creativity and imagination, I thought up an experiment that I'd like to show you that really happened with my garden. And I decided to take this to the school garden where I didn't have any biases or let's say I didn't have uh, any biases of my own because it wasn't my garden. So I went out to the garden and we did an experiment. And this kind of experiment is, an, is a controlled experiment. So I designed it to test the idea about what might work better out in the garden when I'm growing tomatoes. And I came across um, the idea that what if I compared how fish emulsion or fertilizer would work growing tomatoes compared to some product that I found that is really one of my favorite products. This is called Organics Alive. And what this basically is, is worm compost. So I wanted to see which one would really grow the best tomatoes. And so I looked at this controlled experiment and I had to test my idea that the hypothesis would be if I give my tomato plants different kinds of fertilizer, then I believe some of the tomatoes will grow bigger, more healthy, and sweeter. So this was my hypothesis. This was my educated guess. This was my prediction that I put in to this statement, and it was really my starting point in the experiment. So I asked my question, now, in this kind of experiment, I have to control my variables. Variables are factors in an experiment. In this experiment, I had three groups. 
one of the groups was my control. And in that control, I'm not going to give this group of tomatoes any fertilizer because maybe they just grow really good anyway. So in control, there's no fertilizer. That goes right there. Now, my first group, I've given this one fish emulsion. So this one I use fish emulsion. And then the third one I use my Organics Alive worm compost. So I have three groups. In each of the groups I need to control some variables. I need to use the same boxes. So this is out in my garden. There are really nice boxes. They're all caged. They're all the same size. They're all the same depth. This I am controlling. They are constant. I gave my tomatoes throughout the growing season the same amount of water. Each of the boxes had the same water and it was watered at the same time. I also used the same seeds. So I didn't have one group that was different. These are Baker Creek tomatoes and these were the kind of seeds we grew. Really good tomato seeds. So they all had the same tomato seeds. In my controlled experiment, I gave them the same amount of sunshine. Each of them had direct sun coming in the same way so one group didn't get better sun than the other. I controlled this variable. Each of them had the same amount of time. I grew them exactly for one season. And they didn't get more time for one group than the other. These are the variables that remained constant. These I controlled. But there was one variable that I wanted to change. This is my manipulated variable. My manipulated variable is the fertilizer. I wanted to find out if this would work, so I manipulated this variable to be different. So in group number one, the manipulated variable is the fish fertilizer. Group number two, this is the Organics Alive worm compost. So I asked my question, and throughout the growing season, I made observations. I looked at the experiment, and then I analyzed the data. I carefully wrote down the data, and I evaluated the data to form a conclusion. You want to see the conclusion? Because I have it right here. And at the end of the growing season, let me show you what happened. So, remember I said I tested sweetness. Now, this is a qualitative observation. So when I tested these wonderful tomatoes, each of them I tested to see which one was sweeter. They were good. So, let's take a look. My control group that had no fertilizer because I wanted to compare it. Maybe the tomatoes would grow well anyway. These tomatoes turned out pretty well. They're not real big and their color is okay. I looked at their color. I measured their weight. I looked at their size. So this was controlled in that it had no fertilizer. So group number one, this was the fish emulsion. And the fish emulsion tomatoes turned out fairly nice. These looked good in color. They were sweet in taste. And they grew pretty big. They had nice shaped leaves. And there was an overall um, nice shine to them. And I really thought that these were nice tomatoes too. And they grew with the fish emulsion. Now the third one, and this is where my concluding information really took a change. 
the Organics Alive group number two. Take a look at these. Now, not only were these a lot bigger, I mean, some of them were, these, this isn't even the biggest one. They were amazingly bigger and they were much sweeter. So even though they were all organic, the Fish Emulsion and the Organics Alive, these tomatoes were just so much bigger. And it wasn't just one or two, it was throughout the Grio growing season and the harvesting season. When I formed my conclusion, I knew that the Organics Alive had grown much better, sweeter, and healthier and bigger tomatoes. So, if I were to be scientific about this, I need to repeat the experiment. Repetition is really important. So this one growing season, maybe it was a bumper crop. Maybe something else happened. Maybe it was so hot this year that I got these great tomatoes because of the heat. So to be a good experiment, I need to be able to repeat it and get the same results. So next year, I will be repeating this experiment. The responding variables were that the Organics Alive Group 2 grew much bigger than the response from these two. This is my experiment today. I've used some logical thinking, my creativity and imagination to come up with a good scientific experiment to show you the three different kinds of experiments. Descriptive, comparative, and experimental. Thank you for being in my classroom today.